Today I will speak about the portal hypertension and uh, uh, one of complications of uh, portal hypertension, uh, thrombosis of portal vein. First of all, I will speak uh, about the acute stage, then chronic stage, and cirrhotic and non-cirrhotic portal hypertension. There is several factors which are associated uh, with portal vein thrombosis. First of all, in the chronic uh, liver diseases, blood uh, flow goes very slowly in the portal vein. It goes lower than 15 centimeters per second. And uh, we have in chronic liver diseases hypercoagulable states. There is increasement of uh, levels of coagulation factors 8 and Willebrand factor, and decreased synthesis of protein C, S, and antithrombin 3. And in this sample, you can see that portal blood flow is very low, and you can even see turbulation of the blood in the left branch of portal vein. Portal vein thrombosis, acute stage, is grading. Grade first is uh, thrombosis less than 50% of portal vein. Grade two, more than portal vein. Grade three, extension of thrombosis to superior mesenteric vein and complete thrombosis of portal and superior mesenteric vein. And here's a picture when grade one is less than 50%. Grade two, grade three is extension to the superior mesenteric vein and all portal system is thrombosed on the grade uh, four. Acute thrombosis is also associated in prothrombotic states like in patients suffering from myeloprolative diseases, proximal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, antiphospholipid syndrome, factor five laden mutation, uh, factor two mutation, antithrombin, protein C, S uh, uh, deficiency, and so on. And the main factors are associated with reduced portal blood flow, procoagulant pro state, and endothelial injury. Acute portal vein thrombosis very often is associated with very kind, very uh, 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 inflammations like pancreatitis, cholecystitis, and, uh, and so on. Here you see acute portal vein thrombosis, where portal vein is thrombosed. It's a grade two. And uh, in this picture, left branch of portal weight is thrombosed uh, because of the rectal cancer and the metastasis of cancer to the liver. In case of thrombosis of portal vein, you can see only arterial blood flow which goes around the thrombus, and it means that liver is supported, liver blood flow, only by arterial blood flow. Splenic vein thrombosis happens very often in the case of pancreatitis. Here is a grade two, more than 50% thrombosed uh, splenic vein and portal vein. Uh, acute thrombosis happens, and you can see it very clearly by uh, black and white image. If you are not sure, you can apply Doppler, and in Doppler view, you can see only arterial, flow, uh, arterial blood flow surrounding portal vein. Another method, of course, is computer tomography, where also arterial blood flow is seen around the, the thrombus, and uh, very fast around the thrombus is forming so-called portoportal collaterals. Here is thrombosis of the 
uh, splenic vein, which happens very often in pancreatitis, and uh, thrombosis uh, of the splenic vein and portal vein in patients suffering from uh, liver cirrhosis. You can see extension of thrombosis of even to the right branch uh, of the portal vein. And we left this patient for six months uh, uh, with fraxiparin. And after six months, we see that thrombi disappeared from the portal vein. And we got improvement of portal blood flow for this patient. That's the sample of thrombi in the portal vein where fraxiparin or another low molecular weight heparins can be effective. If it's not easy to diagnose, you can apply contrast enhanced ultrasound and you don't see blood flow in the portal vein, just uh, in the artery surrounding portal vein, like in computer tomography uh, picture. That's another sample where you cannot see the blood flow by uh, com contrast enhanced uh, ultrasound. And very dangerous uh, situation is when thrombosis is extended to the superior mesenteric vein. In this picture, it looks like the vein is clear, but applying Doppler, you cannot see blood flow in the mesenteric vein. That's another sample where you cannot see blood flow in the mesenteric vein. And this patient is suffering from primary biliary cirrhosis and by MRT, you can see thrombi in all mesenteric veins. Fortunately, lady, after applying uh, antithrombotic therapy, survived. That's again the sample of thrombosis of mesenteric veins, and it's easy seen even on computer tomography. Quite often we have so-called tumor thrombi. When we see blood flow in the thrombus itself, and it's very often uh, those thrombus are associated with hepatocellular carcinomas. Here is extension of thrombus to the all portal vein system. But you can recognize portal veins, the anatomy of the portal veins. Thrombosis after splenectomy happens very often. That's because of uh, thrombocytosis, which appear after splenectomy. And uh, the bad blood flow is lower in those cases. After liver transplantation uh, happens uh, not so often, but it uh, happens. You see in this sample thrombus at the portopultral junction, and uh, anastomosis is quite narrow, and then that's one of the reasons why thrombosis uh, happen. That's a very <clears throat> seldom case when we had thrombosis of the left branch of the portal vein, and we had periumbilical shunt where thrombosis was extended to periumbilical shunt. Here you see thrombus in periumbilical shunt and thrombus in the left branch of the portal, portal uh, vein, which is grade one, I would say. That's thrombosis in a case of the pancreatic cancer. Most probably it's a tumor thrombus, which blocks the blood flow from the splenic vein. In acute pancreatitis, we have very often compression of the 
splenic vein, but in the late stages of chronic pancreatitis, we calculated the thrombosis, isolated thrombosis of the splenic vein or portal vein uh, happens in 25% of patients. And in acute stage, uh, several other diseases can be cause of thrombosis. In this case, we have Levelia sarcoma with thrombosis of the portal vein, and here we can, you can see stents in the biliary tree. Thrombosis in the case of liver abscesses. You see liver abscesses and thrombosed left branch of the portal vein, which is also very nice seen by computer tomography. Uh, portal portal collaterals appear very fast. Uh, some experts say that they need to uh, appear in four to eight months, but sometimes in one week you can, you can see collateral blood flow. And there are those collaterals. It means in one week there is transformation to the late stage of, uh, of uh, thrombosis. Those collaterals goes around the thrombus and uh, some experts call them warm forming uh, collaterals. Chronic portal vein thrombosis very often appears in non-cirrhotic portal fibrosis and in cirrhosis it appears and very often is associated with hepatocellular carcinoma. Diagnosis is very easy. You see those worm-like stru uh, structures and uh, on um, Doppler ultrasound is very easy to diagnose them. On computer tomography, you cannot see the anatomical structure of the portal vein in the liver itself, just branches outside the, the, the liver. Uh, histological uh, diagnosis is not so important, but you can see fibrosis around the portal uh, vein. Black and white picture and, and uh, 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 Doppler can show the thrombosis itself, but also dilated biliary ducts. It's so-called portal bilopathy, when biliary obstruction happens in case of this complication. You see dilated biliary tree, and some physicians tell us that it happens about 90% of patients, but it's not clinically important. Clinically important, it's maybe in 10 to 20% of, of patients where they need uh, stenting, or maybe we can apply even ursodesoxyholic acid. In case of liver cirrhosis, thrombosis appears quite seldom, but it uh, happens, and uh, most important, it, what kind of blood flow we have in the portal area. If there is dominating arterial blood flow, it means that arteriovenous fistula can be, and those patients progress very fast. They have very serious portal uh, hypertension and portal hypertension complications. And uh, uh, those patients even can have ascites because ascites is not the feature of prehepatic portal hypertension. In those cases, uh, most often we have uh, uh, different kind of uh, viruses. And here on ultrasound you can see here, and it's much more easier to see by 
computer tomography. Varicosis portal systemic collaterals in uh, prehepatic portal hypertension most often appears around the uh, spleen in an anatomic region of short gastric veins. And most often, we uh, deal with uh, isolated gastric varices. Then we have collaterals in retroperitoneal space and also collaterals in liver itself. And those collaterals around the spleen are very large and associated with isolated gastric varicosis, which is extended to gastroesophageal varicosis number two. There is a periumbilical shunt in the case of thrombosis and shunts in the wall of, of uh, belly. Some thrombosis are blocked by coils, but we have a lot of uh, viruses around the stomach and risk of bleeding still exists. Uh, very often, about 20 5% of patients with late stage of portal thrombosis have viruses around gallbladder. It's a typical sign, uh, sign of uh, portal vein thrombosis, but unfortunately it happens only in 25% of, of patients. And that's it. And what I would like to say that, first of all, we have to thrombose uh, the diagnosed thrombosis in acute stage of uh, disease. In this case, we can hope for a canalization, and it happens in some percent of patients. In the chronic stage of uh, portal vein thrombosis, we are dealing with complications, with complications of portal hypertension and complications of uh, biliary obstruction, so-called portal biliopathy. So that's it. Thank you for your attention.